Hello, my name is Sean Copeland and I'm Chairman and CEO of Regent Bank and welcome to another edition of Regent Elevate where we are continuing our discussion on a multiplier versus a diminisher. And just as a reminder, a multiplier is someone who uses their ability, intelligence and authority to amplify the capabilities of the people around them. We grow them, we, we empower them. A diminisher, on the other hand, is someone who tells you what to do and then tests you to make sure you do it. They are the know-it-alls. They are the people that are the smartest in the room and they want to remain the smartest in the room even if it is only in their own mind. So what we're going to talk about today is the third key to being a multiplier, which we all want to be, and that is we have to be a liberator. Now, what do I mean by being a liberator? A liberator unlocks other people's potential by making it about them and not about you. When you move into a leadership position and you have people that work for you in the organization or even in your family, church, school, uh, nonprofit organization, whatever the case may be, it has to be about them. So your focus has to be on how can I help this person grow, how can I help their job uh, be better and not all about me as the leader. So how do, we, how do we become a true liberator that really frees our people up to move to greater heights? Uh, here are just a few keys real quick. As I mentioned, number one, realize that it's no longer about you and it's about your team. Uh, very, very important. It's, it's very difficult to do this when we're busy. A lot of times we become very self-focused when we have so much to do. You got to get out of that and focus on your team and not on yourself. Number two, observe your team carefully or your employees carefully and get to know their strengths. Make sure that they are functioning within their strengths and you know uh, how they are doing uh, on a regular basis. Number three, this is very, very important. Label soft versus hard opinions. Now, what do I mean by that? As a leader, and th this happened to me a lot, when, when I first moved into the CEO role, I would be talking with someone and I would give an opinion on something that was only meant to be an opinion. They would take it as a directive. And all of a sudden, things that I'm saying to people are happening all the way around. Well, I haven't thought it through. I don't even know that that's about, that's just an opinion. And so when you're talking, you have to make it very, very clear that you're going to have opinions on things, but make it clear that, you know, this is a hard opinion. This is something I feel very strongly about, or this is, this is just my thought, but what are your thoughts? Make sure that your team understands that your opinions are not the rule. And frankly, as a leader, your opinion should almost never be the rule. It should almost be a suggestion, something for your team to think about. You got to let them uh, make the decision. And in my experience, they actually make better decisions than you do because they're closer uh, to the action. Uh, the challenge is that w as a leader, when we have very strong ideas, when, when we um, uh, have very, very strong opinions and ways that things need to be, we can suffocate an organization. And we see this over and over and over. I, we were talking about succession planning recently and I was talking to one of uh, my employees and I said, you know, <clears throat> one of the hardest things about my job is there's a hundred things that go on at Regent Bank in any given day that I would probably do differently than the way they are being done. But unless it is catastrophic, you got to let people do their job. You can't constantly be in there uh, micromanaging. Now, here's the problem. Suffocating people can sometimes be unintentional. Another key point here. You will watch leaders, and a lot of times their body language, things that they do or say, they may not, trying to, they may not be trying to uh, be a diminisher, but they are. It's called being an accidental diminisher. How do we do that? Somebody, you're in a meeting, somebody gives an idea, we roll our eyes, or we sigh, or we pretend we're not interested, and we start typing on our cell phone, or we cut them off when they are talking. You may just think you're saving time. You may be a great multitasker. What your entire team is seeing is, oh, he or she is not interested in my ideas, so I'm not going to bring them uh, forward. So we've got to be very careful. Uh, those types of things, policies, hierarchies, they're all almost designed to keep us from thinking and growing. And as leaders, we got to get that stuff out of the way to help our, our team and our employees uh, grow. 
finally, we have to ask their opinions and challenge our employees and make them think. To truly liberate, it's not only that you don't shut them down, it's that you help them grow. So we have to give them the big challenge, give them the big problem. Let them wrestle with it. Don't take it back. Let them figure it out and they will grow and develop uh, into the leaders that you want them to be. Now next time we're going to kind of continue this just a little bit by talking about multiplier key number four and that is being a challenger. So uh, tune in with us next time. We appreciate you being here.